objective is to find and kill assigned targets. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Assassin's Creed 3 multiplayer deathmatch game. I'm Brasky, and today we're playing as the Night Stalker on Fort Wolcott. Uh, which a lot of my videos tend to use. It's, it's a good map. I like I like to play it a lot, but I'm trying <laughs> trying to play the other maps so I can get a little more variance with all these videos. But that's all right. Um, so I'm back. Uh, I've, I I want to apologize for that little hiatus I took uh, a couple weeks ago. My grandmother died, and so I had to go out of town and be with my family and go to the funeral and take care of all that stuff, which is not as fun as it sounds. Um, <laughs> Uh, but you know that's just how it is in a death in a family. Uh, you know, it's fine. Uh, it was my dad's mom, and so my dad is one of the uh, children that kind of has to take care of like all the properties and the money and the uh, belongings, and everything like that right now. So you know that's that's happening right now. And yeah, I mean that's, that is what it is with the death. You know, you gotta take care of that business first. And so you know when I when I came back to town. After being uh, gone for a couple days, then I had to take care of my own business, and so that really just uh, put a, I kind of put a hold to all these videos for a while. But now I have some more free time, and now I'm able to kind of play and uh, get uh, get some games in. Um, you know, that's just how it is. So, isn't that a fun note to start off a video talking about <laughs> things in life that suck? Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so. I kind of want to talk about a few other things that happened over uh, over break, over my break, a little hiatus. Um, that is the E3 conference. I, I made a video right after Microsoft's E3 conference um, and talked about how I, I, I was a little unsure about all the policies that Microsoft was implementing. Um, and then Sony comes out and kind of blows the water, blows, uh, blows out the entire conference out of the water. And uh, for the longest time, I felt like, yeah, PlayStation is definitely a way to go for the next generation. I still feel that way to some degree, but then Microsoft recently released a um, PR thing that's saying that DRM is no longer part of the uh, thing, just the, required for initial download, um, but there's no more family sharing. Apparently that's a rumor, although I feel I thought I read somewhere that the capabilities of family sharing is still possible. Um, there's a lot of things that, um, that are still being misconstrued um, about... Microsoft and Microsoft themselves I, I think Microsoft themselves just doesn't know what they're doing they're doing with their own product it's kind of interesting that way um, I think the biggest issue the biggest concern with uh, the Xbox one is usability it's really strange this is it, I'm, a, I'm a design student and this is the year about user experience and user interface most more so user experience I think it's really strange that Microsoft is trying to branch out into this direction and then completely ignores one of the foundations of good user experience, and that is in itself usability. If you require users to check in on one of their programs every 24 hours, that right there is a huge, huge flaw in usability. I can't believe they thought this was a good idea. I understand that like it's to prevent, um, you know, licensing and ownership of you know games and everything like that it's just it's i understand that policy to a degree on a, on a business sense but as a user as a user as a good user experience as a good like human being thing that just that requires way too much out of someone because that provides way too many unknowns for anyone to feel comfortable about it, it kind of blew my mind when i first learned about that i'm just like no one has the time to invest in that well i mean we'll use the product as we see fit because we bought it that way and microsoft has to realize that if they want a good user experience that the users are going to use it how they want you can't require us to do something that we don't want to do i that that was the biggest thing I, I, I think a lot of people have already talked about like you know the what ifs and everything like that i want to talk about i wanted to talk about something a little bit different that is user experience which is um, something new. If you guys want to learn more about that, check out some readings by Jakob Nielsen, or I, I've heard it pronounced Jacob Nielsen as well. He's the kind of the, the father of um, user experience, and so it's just like, learn about that kind of stuff, and you kind of realize that like Microsoft screwed themselves from the get-go with the DRM stuff, and so... You know, uh, I think that provides a little different perspective, um, but you know, this debate has been talked about to death. I'm, just, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna let it rest, and I'm gonna wait a couple months, learn more about it, and then finally, once the consoles come out, I kind of make my decision then. Um, but right now, I'm kind of leaning towards the PlayStation. <laughs> um, 
But, you know, that's just kind of my two cents about that. So, uh, I think that's enough talking about that. Uh, let's talk about the game. Uh, it was a pretty interesting first half. I uh, got a lot of great... I got a ton of stuns in a row, if you guys noticed that pattern. And then there's there's some good kills and good play right there. And then it kind of all seems to go downhill from this point. <laughs> um, but I chose this game to make uh, another point. Uh, there's two characters here uh, in this game. I, I forget the first one. I think it's called the Savage. The guy that's kind of hunched over and kind of walks around. I think his name is Savage. And the robber here are really good players. They've, they've got really great um, sensibility of how to play the game. But they went for qual uh, quantity of kills over quality. And the robber himself here uh, has the Animus hack ability. And he does get it. But he doesn't get it first. I wanted to kind of show off that like quality of kills are way more important and the way you and the way you play your game there I mean st the stuns in this game really helped uh, me <laughs> um, get uh, in the first place and everything like that but um, you'll see once the kill death uh, kill kill and kills and deaths uh, pop up that like I don't I, I would didn't have a stellar end game but I'm still able to end up on yeah. top because I went for these quality kills yep see this is where the uh, animus hack uh, comes in, but I'm able to stun the robber for a good chunk of it, so I felt pretty good about that. Um, and he only he only gets off like maybe five hacks, I think. Um, which is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, that, that whatever. That's, I mean, that's fine. I don't use Animus Hack. I think it's super unreliable. I don't trust myself getting eight stuns, eight kills, or whatever in a row. <laughs> I don't trust myself doing that. I use the normal five streak, 250 bonus points. Because um, I feel like I can I can actually get that twice in a game if I'm having a really good game, and it's completely possible to go for every single game. The Animus hack is, if you don't have a great starting game, you're probably not going to get it. That's just the nature of the Animus hack, and I just I just I think it's uber unreliable, and I don't want to trust that. Um, I understand the appeal of it, I and mean, it's pretty sweet being able to get that, but again, it's just like, uh, I don't know. It's just it's just it's not reliable enough, and. Uh, there's this theory about games everywhere is that like once you find the cons the best consistency to get the most points that you're just gonna use it because um, that's the nature of the game. Um, so I mean that's just kind of how I picture each game. Anyway, we respawn after that and we we're given the savages a new target. We notice I'm running into the, brewer uh, the brewery here, and we're like, hey, this provides a great opportunity for an area bonus. Nope. <laughs> oh man, I must have let go of my right trigger a little bit too early there because I, <laughs> I failed miserably. I run into a money bomb and he gets a stun off. I was just like, after that, I was like, oh come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. It, <laughs> that, that just cracks me up because like the beginning of this game was really sweet and then I just, it kind of goes all downhill. And I decided to feature it anyway because I was like, hey, at the beginning of this game, this would be a great video and then it all goes crap. <laughs> That's all right, but ugh, Robert's being a little ass hat with his backflip uh, taunts too. I mean, whatever, that's fine. But <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. Um, we were able to lure one of our pursuers and we were able to uh, stun her, and then we drop a smoke bomb, thinking, "Hey, that robber is definitely one of our pursuers," even though we just saw him leaving the other entrance, and we're like, "Well, we're stupid." <laughs> so we take him out, and then we're given four pursuers as our uh, punishment, which is great. <laughs> I decided to stick in this corner, because I don't sense whispers at all. And I'm like, okay, I'll just kind of stay in this corner, keep an eye on the two paths that can lead to this corner, you know, through the brewery here and outside here. But I decided to kind of say, uh, screw it, once we uh, drop a pursuer, we're going to walk outside. I notice a Hessian is one of our pursuers, the whisper is getting stronger, but luckily our target is able to take him out, and then we're able to slip off a nice poison. Um, I thought that kill was really nice. I thought that kind of made up for all the fiasco of what happened inside the brewery there. So that was pretty great. We're getting to the last minute of the game here. Uh, we're just kind of playing it safe, sticking with our blunt groups, standing on the outside of the map, kind of surveying what's going on, looking for our new target. Um, we revealed a pursuer, um, the strong man, right there. So we're kind of pretty wary about that, but he's walking in the inside of the brewery, so we're not, you know, kind of keeping an eye out. And then, uh oh, Savage kind of makes a beeline towards us, and we get contested. Um, uh, I walked I walked outside of that little I want to call it column area first before my copy is so I think since he saw the whole screen light up first like that um, must have assumed it was me which is smart on him 
We're getting in the last 10 seconds of the game here. The Pioneer uh, doesn't realize that we're one of her pursuers and we're able to take her out. Unfortunately, I get taken out in the last couple seconds of the game and I decide to take a nap for my efforts. <laughs> oh man, I do come in first though. Uh, I, I notice that's a weird trend in my videos too. I tend to take a nap whenever I finish my games, as in I die right at the end, but that's okay. End up on top with the Savage and the Robber running out second and third. Again, uh, not the greatest uh, kill death ratio, but again, quality over quantity tends to uh, take the day. So thanks for watching everyone. Really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting. Like the video if you want to help support the channel and watch it grow. And uh, I'll talk to everyone later. Bye-bye.